Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, I received access. Thank you to the people who were assisting me. I don't wanna put any names out there. But I got access to part two of the BBC documentary. I watched the whole thing. Let's just get right to it. And there was so much that I'm just going to go step by step the way they went through it. Okay, let's go. To start with, the gentleman who's doing this documentary insinuated that William was behind briefings to the press. It was very obvious but was unable to give any names or any proof. So once again, unsubstantiated rumors. Then Megan's attorney came in and she started using word salad, a lot of word salad. She stated, bullying is using improper use of power repeatedly and deliberately to hurt somebody. It seems like Meghan Markle's attorney is playing word games because now instead of saying there's no bullying, she said there was no intentional hurting of someone, which implies that she probably did hurt somebody, but she's going to claim it wasn't intentional. She pointed out that there was no evidence to prove that Harry and Meghan were not bullies because you can't prove a negative. But isn't that the same for the royal family? Wasn't it okay for them to go on Oprah and make unsubstantiated claims and expect the royal family to prove a negative? The Oprah interview was brought up, but nobody mentioned the fact that almost everything that they said in that interview was shown to be a lie. The attorney brought up the story about Kate making Megan cry and saying that this was actually the turning point when the story originally came out that Megan had made Kate cry. That was when people turned on her. Harry and Megan were getting nothing but good press in 2018. It was all positive press until that story about Kate crying came out. That apparently was the turning point. Meghan Markle's baby shower was brought up and the documentary said they don't like the royals when they're having a good time and that's the problem. They like them to be miserable in the rain, but that's really not it. Well, again, the documentary left out the fact that while she was having a one half million dollar baby shower and had taken yet another private jet, she had just tweeted about how we should look after the poor. That's the problem. They compared Kate as the English Rose who never opens her mouth and only does scripted speeches and is very careful in what she says. And Megan is outspoken and talks about feminist issues. I take exception to that. I think Kate does talk about very serious issues. I think she's always done that. But the monarchy is neutral. And Megan said in her engagement interview that she understood it all. Just as a side note, the woman that you see above who insulted Kate in this tweet was also in the documentary. Hmm. Another thing brought up was that Megan was always cradling her belly and why didn't Kate get the same bad press that Megan did? Because that's easy. If you look, you can only see Kate do it once or twice, but Megan literally did not take her hand away from her stomach for the whole pregnancy. That's why. Now, in 2019, you had the pregnancy, and Harry and Meghan lied to the media about the birth and where they were. They made it difficult for the British media, and quite frankly, they made the media look stupid. So, you know, if you're not going to play the game with the media, the media is not going to play the game with you. I've said it before. There's a symbiotic relationship. That's the way it works. All right, the next thing they brought up was Frogmore Cottage and the fact that it was dilapidated and it was being renovated. And they thought that the stories that came out about Harry and Meghan spending 2.5 million were unfair. But what they said was very misleading because this is what actually happened. Imagine the house that you're living in is being renovated and as a perk, your boss says, I'm gonna let you live there, but you wanna make some other changes and those changes cost your boss $2.5 million, but then you quit your job. Yes, you have to pay the overage. And that is actually what happened to them. This, the house was being renovated, but they made changes that were over and above the renovations. It showed them at the Disney premiere talking about negative press, 
But again, forgot to mention that Harry did not go to a get-together to honor fallen Marines, so he could go to the Disney premiere and hawk making some work with a Disney executive. But of course, they left that out as well. Their use of private jets was brought up. How do you defend that? How do you talk about being an eco-warrior while you're flying around on all these private jets? There's just no defense for that, I'm sorry. In 2019, Harry and Meghan went on tour. Apparently, they had nothing but positive press. Everything was going really well until Harry decided to go talk to Tom Bradbury, and so did Meghan. These two stood in what has to be one of the poorest areas of Africa and whined about their lot in life. Harry was shooting the press nasty looks. He was like a spoiled brat. They, they brought the press down on them. It was brought up that William was really upset over the ITV documentary and the Tom Bradbury uh, interview. William was very concerned about his brother. And they even brought up where Megan said she didn't know anything about the tabloids. I mean, what a lie. It was at this point that the letter had been sent to Megan's father and she decided to start the lawsuit against the newspapers. And we all know you can't do that unless you have clean hands. Then Harry filed a lawsuit and on and on it goes. Now in the meantime, William was courting the press because as a th the future king, that's what he needs to do. But they made it seem like it was nefarious somehow. Now towards the end, I found it very interesting. The documentary did not mention that Harry and Meghan wanted the half in half out role where they could live in the palace and have security, but only have to work for the queen every now and then. They totally left that out. And then they talked to the person who wrote the Tattler article about Kate. The woman admitted that the article she wrote about Catherine had a snobby edge to it. And she admitted that she said that they came from a common family background and that she said that Kate was perilously thin. But she said that was a compliment. I wouldn't have taken that as a compliment. You should know that towards the end, Harry and Meghan's attorney said that the couple never said they wanted privacy. I was shocked when she said that. As far as the bullying claims go, let me just remind you of a few things. The second it was announced that there was going to be a bullying investigation, Meghan Markle wrote to the palace demanding the names of the people who were making these allegations. She was probably going to threaten them with a letter or something. It didn't work. We've all seen the stories. Megan said it wasn't her job to coddle people. She shouted at Kate's staff and Kate told her flat out, that's my staff and you don't talk to them that way. The queen had to take her aside and say, we don't talk to staff that way. I mean, it's obvious. I've told you guys before where there's smoke, there's fire. And Megan had an issue with the way she spoke to people underneath her. And let's not forget that this part two was supposed to be about... Um, William and Harry's households briefing against each other and all these horrible rumors, which, by the way, they were unable to come up with. And it would appear that all that part two did was recycle the same old information about they're racist, they didn't support me, they're racist, they didn't support me. And with that constantly being said by Megan, how the palace has never backed her, here's proof. These headlines clearly show that the palace came out in their defense plenty of times. It does appear that the BBC backed down and re-edited the documentary because the Crown let it be known that uh, they were getting their attorneys involved. You can't just put out this kind of misinformation because that's what you want to do at that time. It also has come to light that there was a five-part podcast that was supposed to be released at the same time, but the BBC is holding back on it to wait and see if there's going to be legal action. Then they'll be releasing it as a boxed set. Aye. Just a quick fin update. As you can see, he and Toodles are looking at the same thing outside, side by side, buddies. They're getting there. They're getting there. So here's my honest review of the BBC documentary. It was simply a rehashing of the same old thing from Harry and Meghan. They tried to slant it in Harry and Meghan's favor. I don't believe it worked. Make sure to leave your comments below. You know how much I love to read them. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when I upload new documents, okay? You know you can follow me on Twitter. You know you can email me. And to the person who donated to my coffee fund and sent the message over PayPal that it was to go for alcohol, 
I absolutely followed your wording and I bought myself some alcohol. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. As always, you guys have a great day.